So uh, one that is most recent, uh, there was a, uh, a lady that called uh, the church building at Piedmont Road where I worship and where I preach. Um, we have, we're the headquarters of the Georgia School of Preaching. And so there are people who are all over the state. And they're familiar with all 13 campuses that the school has, satellite campuses. And so um, this lady was calling and she was over in the Buford area, which is like an hour and 10 minutes from us. And so she called our church secretary and our church secretary said, hey, let me let me let you talk to uh, our pulpit minister. He's here with me. And and uh, so talk to her. And she said, I've lived 53 years without Jesus and I'm tired of it. So it was almost like, you know, you pray for pray for the harvest. And, you know, it's almost like one of those prayers that, you know, don't pray unless you're ready, ready to do the walking, you know. And uh, and it was just uh, it was a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And but being so far apart um you know an hour or so i was willing to go there but the buford church is very strong very great ben hogan he's the evangelist minister over there and um and in fact his his granddad is a one of the most zealous human beings i've ever met um and i was talking to you earlier about demar Elam before the show that's his granddad so anyway i, I kind of turned the buck over to her or over to him being over in buford and um needless to say it was a, a very good study and um so do you want me to finish telling you how, how it all finished or? Hey, well, yeah, let's tell, let's talk about it when we, uh, later on the show, it'd be yeah. awesome to hear what happens. Yeah, so tell us who, who you are, where you're from, uh, your name, interesting fact. Yeah. So Jake Sutton, um, I am from North Georgia, a city called Adairsville. Um, I'm 35 years old. Uh, I have a little boy named Stone. Uh, we're wide open in baseball right now, which is great. Loving that. Um, but I, I preach at the Piedmont Road Church in Marietta, Georgia. I've been there since September of 19, uh, but I've been preaching for 10 years. And so um, so it's been good. I got my education from Faulkner University, uh, the Memphis School of Preaching, and continuing my education through Freed Hardeman. And so uh, looking looking forward to that. But nice. <clears throat> anyway, that's um, that's pretty much me. I, you know, outdoorsmen love, love to get out and and uh, love what you're doing here. Love social media. Love to, to you know, leave an imprint on people it, it, as much as we can, you know, through social yeah, it's, media. It's definitely like a lasting uh, impact because people can watch it around the world. So it's um, and so let's get into the show. Then let's, let's talk about the strategies. What uh, three strategies do you <laughs> prefer or uh, recommend for people? Well, obviously, the first thing that you want to do is pray. Uh, I've taken I've taken a lot of evangelism courses. I've taken a lot of. Um, uh, different courses with different methods, and 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 it's almost as though I've I've kind of intertwined uh, several of them that fits me. So whatever fits you, and, and there's some good books out there, you know, sharing Jesus uh, without freaking out. I think, uh, or it's, it's um, sharing. I think it's maybe sh sharing Jesus without freaking out. I think that might be the one. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, and there's some old great books that that talk about that. But in our 2022 world, you know, like radio is very um, casual conversation style, you know, it's, it's, it's no longer, you know, just the facts, man, kind of thing. So, um, whatever works best for you, but for me, uh, particularly, um, I have a, a course that I took that kind of shaped my faith, uh, that, that actually, um, that, that the Lord providentially used on me to get me out of police work and into preaching, um, was the Fishers of Men course. And, uh, it's a 13 week course. And so what happened was the first uh, first time I was taking it, um, a deacon at the church I was worshiping with in Dalreda, at Dalreda, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, he said, I got a class I want you to take. And so the class was, uh, you know, 13 weeks, like I said, but it's very structured. Uh, it, it comes out and, and it eliminates the awkward silence. And, uh, and I have used this um, particularly in this particular strategy uh, one time um, and, and this strategy alone, but you ask a series of questions and it's, um, uh, you know, hello, my name is Jake. And, um, can I ask you three questions? They're religious questions. I'm taking a survey and you just tell me which one of these is most interesting to you. And, and you're not looking for book, chapter, verse. All you're doing is just listening. And so the course prepares you to listen for trigger words and emotions and things. And so it's a really good course. It's taught all around the world. Um, the guy who taught me, Barry Hatcher is over in the Philippines now teaching and, um, but it's uh, you, you ask a series of three questions like, well, most people go to heaven. Is Jesus God or is there a thing such a God? And so or as such as uh, is there a thing such as God? And so 
And all you're asking for is you just give me the most interesting question. You're not asking them to answer it. But what it's doing is it's, it's causing their mind to flow, you know, and I've had people say, uh, well, most people go to heaven and I'll, and I'll just write it down. So that's interesting. Now, why did you, why did you pick that one? And so what you're doing is you're just asking questions. You're getting their juices flowing. You know, it's not a debate. Uh, it's not confrontational. You're just asking questions. And so it's, um, it's a, it's a freeing thing. Um, you know, our Lord, he, he did this sort of method, this discovery learning, you know, he would ask a question. He already knew the answer, but he would ask them a question for their sake. And so, and, and, and it tells you where they are. It tells you a little bit about their background. And, and, um, and so, uh, Fishers of Men is a very good course. Uh, you may not like it. Uh, a part of me feels kind of rigid to it. I don't feel as fluid as I want to be in it. And, um, but another thing that really helped me in the Philippines when I was there doing mission work, they, they just generally call it uh, friendship evangelism. And so friendship evangelism is basically you're evangelizing your friends. Now, in America, we don't per se necessarily like that because we think, well, that means that we're going to cause division. We're going to cause strife and we may not see our family at Christmas dinner anymore. You know, that sort of thing. And so that's that's realistically a thing that a lot of Americans struggle with. The people that I love the most, I'm afraid of threatening that love with the gospel. And so it's an absolute threat. You know, it can. Uh, but the method that they that they they spoke more highly about over there and what I use over here is the friendship evangelism. It's the whole adage that people don't know. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so if you have a person that loves you and that you love them and they know that and you're for their good, then friendship evangelism is one of those things that um, you, you are, are that person to have that close conversation with them and say, hey, listen, you know that I love you. You know that I want what's best for you and all things. Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the most important thing that we can ever talk about, you know. You've been listening to Be Brave. The world right now is a crazy place, and sharing the love of God is the most important thing we can do right now. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit up GoBeBrave.org. Remember, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Learn how to love like Jesus. See you next time.